privilege and an honor to welcome Dr. Stephanie Xiu Cheng to give our lecture tonight. Stephanie is from Taiwan, and I met her at the Peabody Conservatory of Music in Baltimore, and we've been friends and colleagues for uh, including uh, Vile Hall in uh, New York City, and um, has played uh, with the orchestra, uh, the Oakville Chamber Orchestra also, most recently in a Mozart concerto. And uh, she taught at uh, the American University of Kuwait for several years, and now is at the University of Denver, and is a really an outstanding musician. We're very pleased to have her talking here tonight. So I'm going to, we'll, we'll, she'll give a lecture, and then as the lecture is going on, please feel free to put any questions into chat, and she'll get to them after that. And you can also have, if you have oral questions at the end, that, that'll be great also. So thanks very much to everybody attending, and uh, welcome Stephanie Cheng. Welcome. Thank you so much, Charles. Um, yeah, I, it, it's it, it, thanks to the technology, I, um, we are able to get together tonight uh, while I'm in Denver, Colorado. And it's wonderful for me to do this um, lecture um, as I've played with um, Oakville Chamber Orchestra, I think three or four times. So it, it's just always um, wonderful to be back. Um, even though in a different capacity this time. I'm going to try to um, share the screen and have, uh, have a um, PowerPoint and some excerpts for you to listen to. And these excerpts I'm going to play um, are quite short, um, just to give you a flavor of um, the sound instruments, how they sound like. Um, so I apologize if, they're, um, if you are craving for more. But um, I am going to hear and share. Okay, all right. Um, there are over 50 ethnic groups in China. However, what's commonly known as Chinese traditional music is referred to Han Chinese music. Han makes up the world's largest ethnic group. I am of Han ethnicity. The oldest known musical instrument from China is the bone flute, dated back to 9,000 years ago. They were made from the legs of the red crown cranes. In fact, there are people still playing this instrument in um, the recent day, the current days. From historical documents and archaeological artifacts discovered, we know that Chinese music was well developed by Zhou Dynasty, which was in around um, 8, 1100 to 250 years before Christ. During Zhou Dynasty, a formal ceremonial music was established called Ya Yue. The literal translation is elegant music. In Chinese, the word Yue means music. Um, even though the literal translation is music, um, it included dance and extended to poetry, um, as well as art, other art forms and rituals. Many Chinese philosophers took different approaches to music. Confucius from the Zhou Dynasty heavily promoted the use of music especially in rituals, and considered a quote-unquote correct form of music is important for the growth and de refinement for an individual. His belief was music is, uh, is the harmonization of heaven and earth, and the application of music in rites creates the older that makes it possible for society to prosper. Although other philosophies, philosophers condemned 
making music as extravagance and indulgence that served no useful purpose and may be harmful. Confucius' belief was instilled and ingrained in the thinking of many Chinese. Growing up, um, the model that I heard all the time was kids who play music will not turn bad, which conveys the importance of music education. Um, and I grew up in, in Taiwan. And, um, and I believe that belief um, is seen a common thinking in, across many parts of Asia. Um, other extra curric uh, curricular activities I did in the summer as a child included creative writing, Chinese calligraphy, and dance. Han Chinese music is commonly distinguished into two styles, northern and southern. The two styles correspond to the two major geographical and cultural areas where most Han people live. There are some differences in cultures between the north and the south. The north is cold, dry, and windy. Such harsh living condition is reflected in the high-pitched, tense, and agitated style of folk songs. The South has milder weather and more rain. Life seems easier in the South, and the folk songs are generally more lyrical and gentle. Other characteristics that separate the north from the south are, in the north, wheat is the stable food while it is rice in the south. Homes in the north have heaters um, and they don't in the south. And um, northerners' physique tends to be taller or um, stronger, which um, since I'm from the south, I would maybe debate that. <laughs> okay, the map on the left shows how north and south is divided. If you can see here is Beijing, that's the current um, capital of China. And the map on the right shows the green areas are where rice is harvest, harvested. The significance here is the differences in lifestyles. After the overthrow of the Qing dynasty, the last dynasty, Musicians began to add jazz influences and traditional music through the addition of violins, xylophones, saxophone, among other Western instruments. In Shanghai, so on the coast, in the 1920s, a new genre of music emerged called Shi Dai Qu which is a fusion of Chinese Western popular music, fusion of Chinese and Western popular music. It dominated the music scenes for three decades until the arrival of the communist. Let's have a listen.
now let's take a look at the Chinese musical instruments. Here is a picture of Hong Kong Chinese Orchestra. Now the instruments are divided into eight sounds. So, um, ba in eight sounds, based on the materials used to make the instruments, animal skins, gourd, bamboo, wood, silk, clay, metal, and stone. Like the Western orchestra, it is also divided into strings, winds, and percussions. The string instruments um, have two types. One is bowed, in, uh, bowed string, and the other is plucked or struck string. In the bold string family, Erhu, two string violin, two strings violin, Er actually means the number two. Is made, Erhu is made with woods over here, the body here, and um, ivory tusks that's carved, and snake skin. And the bow hair is threaded in between the two strings. So let's have a listen. Like violin, viola, cello, which are similar instruments with different registers, different pitches, um, many Chinese instruments also come in various registers and different sizes. Um, so the word gao means high, zhong means middle, and di means low. So you will often hear an instrument um, the name of the instrument changes um, by having the word gao or zhong or di as a prefix. So for example, that um, erhu, hu is, is from the hu um, family. And so you could have gao hu, zhong hu, or di hu. So hu isn't the only instrument um, that you will see in their name changes. Now, taking a traditional instrument like the erhu, with the Western influence, um, gehu was developed in the 1950s. Um, it is a four string instrument. The tuning is the same as the Western cello and it uses the same bow and the strings as the cello. And gohu also come in a very, very low pitch um, gohu, which is just like the double bass. So let's hear. Um, the acoustics of gohu is not very effective. In addition, they are expensive. So often they are simply replaced by the Western cellos and basses. Here's a picture of the Taipei Chinese Orchestra. And you can see the here's um, are the cellos and the double basses. They are replacing the gohu section. 
other who family instruments, um, all the names end with who, and they are they have slightly different names based on the registers, the materials made, and the origin. So you may see this who is quite short. This is actually called Jing Hu. Jing Hu comes from Beijing. So that's how um, you may see uh, different names, but they all sound quite similar. Some have um, higher pitch than others. Now, moving on to plucked or struck string instruments. Um, when the instrument is plucked, it's plucked with false nails or a plectrum or um, guitar pick. Um, pipa, this is a picture of a pipa, it has four strings. The musician wears false nails to pluck the strings. So let's hear how it sounds. When a string is plugged, the sound does not sustain. And so the technique used here to sustain the sound on the pipa is by continuously plucking with rotating fingers. When the string is plugged outward, it creates a sound like P. And when it's plugged inward, the sound sounds like pa, hence the name pipa. Here is a liu qing. Sometimes um, it is called the little pipa because it's very similar to pipa, except it does not use um, false nails, um, but use a plectrum or a guitar pick. Now you can see the two pictures comparing um, the picture on the left here. That's the little pipa. And this one on the, the picture on the right is the pipa. Um, this um, instrument is special to me because I, I played this instrument when I was a young teenager. And the reasons for me to pick this instrument, so when I was um, going to school, they said everybody has to pick um, a Chinese instrument. And I picked this instrument because I played a violin. So um, the left hand is very similar to the violin technique. And um, however, pipa, I mean, sorry, liu qing does have um, frets, which makes it easier to play in tune, um, easier than the violin anyways. Um, and it uses a guitar pick, which is easier than using the false nails and having to use fingers. So let's hear this and, and do a little comparison to pipa, how it sounds compared to pipa.
Um, this next instrument is called run. It comes in different, uh, five different sizes and registers. Um, the way to perform it is the same as the little pipa, and it uses a plectrum or a guitar pick. Next, we have gu zheng. Um, like pipa, the um, musician wears false nails to pluck the strings. Let's have a quick listen. Yang Qing. Um, it is a struck string instrument. It uses hammers. Here are the hammers. Well, um, the Yang Qing, the modern Yang Qing, um, usually have um, 144 strings in total. Now, we'll listen how it sounds. Um, the dulcimers are actually soft rather than um, like the percussion instruments in the, uh, the Western percussion instruments use. Um, and that's how it creates this um, more mellow sound. Okay, now we're going to move on to wind instruments. Um, wind instruments, they are Di zi, guan, sheng, and xiao. Now, these are Chinese characters, and they all share a radical. Now, I've had them circled and highlighted. Um, the radical actually means bamboo. So it's telling us that these instruments um, were made with bamboo, um, at least they were um, initially. Now, di zi is a bamboo flute with membrane. Um, di zi comes in various sizes and registers, um, just like the flute and the piccolo. As you can see here in the picture, um, now, these are the holes that um, control the pitches. Um, they don't have the numerous paths 
like um, a flute does. So it is not a very um, chromatic um, instrument. One can press the hole, just maybe half the hole, or, or I would say three quarter of the hole to change the pitch a little bit. And, and you can change the pitch also with your mouth, but that's about it. You don't really have those, um, the half steps. Let's listen. Other wind instruments, um, guan, guan, is a cylindrical double reed wind instrument made of either hardwood or bamboo. We'll listen to all these instruments really quickly. Here's a, here is guan. Okay, sheng is a woodwind instrument which consists of a set of bamboo pipes of different lengths which vibrate at different frequencies. The pipes are inserted into a chamber with finger holes and the modern ones are much larger. Okay, now, um, xiao is a, a pipe, a pan pipes. Now, want to listen to this one. The one on the right is a xiao. And shell can also come in an array of pipes. The next um, instrument is called sona. It's a double reed wind, wind instrument with a wide metal bell at the end.
right, as you can hear, um, it is the loudest Chinese instrument. Um, he has absolutely no problem overpowering the entire orchestra. So um, perhaps you can guess if the instrument is from the north or from the south. Um, it's from the north. Um, it's loud and high-pitched sound has made it a lead instrument in outdoors ensembles used for ceremonial and military purposes. Now, next instrument is called Hu Lu Si. It's a gourd vertical flute, um, a wind instrument with three bamboo pipes inserted through a gourd wind chest. One pipe has finger holes and the other two pipes are drone pipes. So here's a Hulu Si concerto. The solace is standing. That was a quick um, introduction of uh, various in Chinese instruments. So I want to talk a little bit about um, the scale that the Chinese music uses. It's um, pentatonic scale. It's based on the circle of fifth theory. Um, what does that mean? If you start with the pitch C and move up by a fifth, it, you would have G and go up a fifth is D, and another fifth up is A, another fifth up is E. Now take these pitches and rearrange them. You have A, D, um, C, D, E, G, A. Now, if a, since C is the first note, we're going to name it number one, and therefore D will be two, E will be three, G is five, A is six. So um, the pitches are one, two, three, five, six. Now, many um, Western composers have used pentatonic scales. Um, one example um, is Puccini's very last uh, masterwork, Toronto. Um, he quoted a folk song called Mo Li Hua, which means jasmine flower. Now, you might be familiar with this tune, but in case you can't think of it right now, this is the mountains of the East. We heard all the pitches are, are in the pentatonic scale. Now, other examples are um, Debussy's Pagode from the Piano Suite as Dumb and Dvorak's theme from New World Symphony. Um, now, notation for Chinese music. Um, the current days, 
most musicians will read the Western, the same Western um, notation. However, um, one no notation that is still being used and, and very commonly used is called simple score, jian pu. Now, so let's take a look if, um, if we see one equals C, that means um, we are in the key of C major. And right here you see three over four. That means we have three quarter notes in each measure. So the pitches are being um, notated with numbers. Now if C is one, five gives you G. Now in, within these bar lines, just like we, we have in the Western notation, between the bar lines, there should be three quarter notes. Right here, the first number one is a quarter note, and it's followed by a little dash. That means it's an extra quarter note. Therefore, this pitch one, which is C, is actually two beats, um, half note. Now you have three and one underneath has a dash over. This dash underneath the numbers um, indicates the number of flags. So we have one dash for two notes. Now that means we have two eighth notes, just like our um, two eighth notes with a flag connected. So one beat, two beat, and this is the third beat. One beat, second beat is a held pitch three sustaining. And the third beat is two, pitch two. And then pitch one and held for extra beat and then pitch six. Now these dots above the numbers indicates the octave. It's an octave higher than the starting octave. So I don't know if you guys want to take a look and try to sing this and try to figure out what this song is. Five, one, three, one, three, two, one, six, five, five, one, three, one, three, two, three, five. So this is this is how amazing grace will look like in simple score. Okay, to end um, today's presentation, I'd like to play you a performance that brings the East and the West together. Um, okay, now this is a, a Erhu concerto, um, and the title is called The Great Wall Capriccio. Now, it's a Erhu um, soloist with a Western, accompanied by a Western orchestra. <laughs>
All right, that ends our presentation today. Let me click out of the share. Great. Right. Um, do we have any um, questions or discussions? Uh, I was wondering, I had heard that there was also um, a full scale, not just pentatonic, but um, regular, like what we would co consider a major scale, that the Chinese music had all those sounds as well. Sure. Um, I think the instruments have changed so much. Um, and as you can see, the in uh, couple of instruments that I mentioned, they're getting bigger and bigger. And the writings now, the um, the modern composers will write music and with the same notation as Western music and um, and uses major and minor. And so it's no longer just in the, um, use, not no longer just the pentatonic scale, right? But as you can see that, for example, Di Zi, the instrument, it was only a certain number of holes. And so it's very much like the natural horn, natural French horn, for example, that um, you don't, you, the pitches, if you have the, um, the other two pitches, the F and the B, um, or the fourth or the seventh in the scale, it would not be in tune. Are the traditional Chinese instruments widely taught in school? Which ones do most pe most people play? Very, um, that's a great question. Um, are they um, widely taught in school? The answer is no. Uh, or I can only speak for for Taiwan, where I grew up. Um, the answer is not really. Um, so I grew up with uh, education that I I I was. Um, selected into the music classes um, that we got free lessons and free edu music education by and it was all paid by paid for by the government and um, the instruments were purely just um, western instruments however um, some schools would have more of an initiative to bring the, uh, the chinese music back and so that was why when I was um, in middle school, I was required to learn a Chinese, mu a Chinese instrument. Now, there are some um, Chinese orchestras in Taiwan, in China, in Hong Kong, in Malaysia, all, they, they are, but I don't think the numbers are as high to, as the Western orchestras um, by all means. So, um, they are not widely taught, um, and but the ones the most people play, mm, I would say dizi and uh, pipa, and then maybe the the little pipas, those are very common. And yangqing, the ones that use the hammers, and is also quite common. Um, Gu zheng, not so much, perhaps some instruments are very expensive. Now, um, is the idea of a big ensemble borrowed from the West? Yes. Um, if not, what kind of ensembles were there? Um, the ensembles often, we have to remember the music was first invented for rituals. So you will see um, Parades, for example, um, I would say, you know, you have a big celebration, um, you know, with the dragon and the lions and the dance, dance walking down the, the street on a Chinese New Year, for example, there will be um, instruments and music following the processions. So those are the ensembles that, that um, were first used, you'll hear the music being used in ensembles. And these 
quote unquote orchestras that you sit down and look at the pictures that I showed you, um, those are very much influenced by the West. Um, so, for example, that loudest instrument, sona, that will be the instrument you'll hear when the festive um, procession walking down the street, um, including actually funerals as well. Um, so a procession, the walking procession of a funeral, you will hear um, the ensemble and instruments music being played. It's amazing though how expressive and beautiful pentatonic songs are. When I was a student, a friend brought a book of very beautiful Chinese folk songs and we learned a few of them to play to at a Chinese um, New Year's concert. So lovely. Yeah, I think so too. You know, what's actually very interesting is um, I obviously I was very much Western trained, Western music trained. So um, Chinese, I, I was not all that, um, should I say keen <laughs> with some of the music, um, some of the instruments, at least, you know, I, I thought like Suona, the loudest instrument was very abrasive to my ears. I wasn't used to it. But when I was doing this preparation for this lecture, I actually found myself keep listening to it and, and didn't click off because I thought, oh, this is really fabulous. This, why was I not informed more? And so I, I absolutely agree with Christine. I heard piano is very popular in China, many with world famous pianists. Could you explain this phenomenon? So I would say absolutely um, what the Confucius um, believe really kept in the thinking of Chinese people. Um, when I grew up, it was a very much of a status thing. If you play music, um, you're well educated and it, it, you, you know, as Confucius said, um, it's refinement and growth in an individual. So, um, I think that has now come to China with the one child policy. Um, the parents wanted to invest, invest in their um, child's education very much. And music is definitely one that they choose um, with that same, same thinking. Um, I would say, however, um, other countries, the enthusiasm of um, everybody needing to learn the music has slowed down a little bit, um, given it's just becoming harder and harder to find jobs um, as a musician, unfortunately. Um, however, music edu general music education is still very much um, valued. So every public school will have music education. So just about every single person sings in, in school choir. Um, whether or not you are a, a sophisticated musician, um, I, um, everyone knows how to read um, staff, music staff and, and scores. Any more question? Well, thank you so much, everyone. Um, these are lovely comments. You know, while we still have you, I, I do want to find that um, YouTube that somehow I lost the link. Um, if you could just bear with me and I will find that instrument. Um, you know, I will share the screen so you can see what I'm doing really quick. Okay. 
I'm just going to YouTube and quickly here. So this is how I enter Chani's character. Okay, so right. So here, I'm just going to click on this one. Been a, a popular Chinese music, <laughs> um, not a classical um, per se, but um, that was a, 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 a an array of pipes, and these are our bamboo pipes. So we got two more new messages. I remember playing a concert with the Mississauga Symphony many years ago with a fabulous local Erhu soloist. The audience loved it. Should do more. Absolutely. Um, and I think you guys may know uh, Lang Lang, the pianist, Chinese pianist, and he goes on tour with his father. His father plays Erhu and what with him at the piano. And so we are seeing more and more um, combination of Chinese and Western music um, together as an ensemble. Right. Well, thank you so much, lovely audience and wonderful comments. I'd like to say thank you on behalf of the orchestra. It's so wonderful to have your expertise. Thanks everybody for showing up. I apologize for my poor audio quality here and video quality, but I've certainly enjoyed it and hope to have you back sometime. My pleasure. Thank you very much.